So we are walking along Montague Street in Brooklyn towards Brooklyn Heights and this is one of our old haunts, isn't it Paul? Yes, this is. We used to come along here every time that I would visit and once you get to the, the promenade it gives you one of the most fantastic views of panoramic. lower, uh, yeah, panoramic view of lower Manhattan, which of course you can't see from the island itself. And this is one of our favourite Starbucks because we used to come in here when I was but a boy, right? Yes, just a boy. And we have photographs taken uh, of me in here when I had blonde hair. I'll try to fish it out sometime, but it is in my archives. So we are going to go in for a very refreshing cold drink. I remember about Montague Street are all the little shops and bars, <laughs> such as this cake shop here. The I always remember cakes. It's probably had a new look since we were last here. Yes, I believe there was. In fact, it is right here. Well remembered. And the other thing I remember are all the brownstones, the typical New York apartment building. Mm. Very Carrie Bradshaw. But would she have come to Brooklyn? Probably not. not. Really. Oh, this looks interesting. The Brooklyn Cat Cafe. Shall we have a look? Well, we've left the shops behind and in front of us now I can see the little alleyway down to the promenade and we pass Montague Terrace first of all and it's ever so pretty along here at any time of year Wow, look at that. Here we come with Lower Manhattan. Right in front of us, the Staten Island Ferry coming into dock. Take it all in. And that's the Brooklyn Bridge in the distance over there.
Look, the Staten Island Ferry. Oh, wow. Isn't this view magnificent? Well, this is what we came for, the view. And isn't it absolutely spectacular? Oh my God, this is amazing. And if you can just imagine that back before 2001, you could see the Twin Towers of the, the World Trade Center standing right behind us there. And today, the Freedom Tower, one World Trade Center, is standing in the same location. So it's an absolutely fabulous place to visit and Brooklyn Heights on Montague Street as you walk down, as I said, you've had, you know, a little chance to look at all the little shops, the cafes, and then you come down to this absolutely spectacular view. It is most definitely highly recommended. Well, New York is synonymous for having these food trucks behind me. They are there in the morning to do breakfasts. They're also there in the lunchtime to have your wraps and sandwiches pre-made for you to order. In addition, they do the coffee so that you could get your iced coffee, especially on such a hot day like today in New York. is the Plaza Hotel where Home Alone 2 was set. I wanna make you shit, make you sweat, make you uh, uh. I wanna make you move, make you... We hope you're enjoying the show. Please stay tuned for more after the break. I wanna make you shit, make you sweat, make you uh, uh. I wanna make you move, make you groove, make Thank you for watching our show today. If you like what you see, then please like, comment, and subscribe. Keep watching. Marcus, what are you doing? I'm trying to find the URL for our show. Why don't you just Google it? Well, you saw the sign, Gay Street, and we are going into the gay village, aren't we, Paul? Gay Street, yep, definitely we are. So actually, it's not all in the name because the gay area is actually mostly centered around Christopher Street. And we are heading up to one of the most famous pubs in the world. The Stonewall Inn. The events that began at the Stonewall Inn in 1969 marked a monumental change for lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender and queer Americans. Stonewall, which occupied 51 to 53 Christopher Street, was a gay bar that was raided on June the 28th, 1969. Patrons and a crowd outside resisted and confrontations continued over the next few nights in nearby Christopher Park and on adjacent streets. This uprising catalyzed the LGBTQ civil rights movement, resulting in increased visibility for the community but continues to resonate in the struggle for equality. And here it is, the Stonewall Inn, and you've just heard me read the plaque that sits outside. Now, we have been coming here since we met in 1999. Lovely place. In fact, the Stonewall was one of the first bars that I went to before I met Paul when I made my first visit to New York way back in March 1999. And we've had some monumental evenings there. 
So I think it is just right that we hopefully can go and have a little drink now. Yes, a nice beer or two. Well, it's after two o'clock, it's after opening time. Well, so it said online, so we'll uh, go and check it out. Well, as Paul applies some more sunscreen and I get my Lady Gaga glasses on, um, we've just come out of Stonewall and it's been fantastic to just be back there again. And uh, we hope that you've enjoyed some of the, the footage that we have shot while we were in there. And of course, for copyright reasons, we've had to add our own music. But there's a lot more on Christopher Street to discover. It's a street that's actually split in half by, what is that avenue up there? 7th Avenue. 7th Avenue. So we are going to explore the other part. Well, behind me is the duplex and it is almost next door to Stonewall. It's on the same side um, of the street before it splits. So we're going to cross over 7th Avenue now and have a look on the other side. Well, as we cross 7th Avenue, there is one other place that I want to point out to you, Village Cigars. I always remember that sign. Not that I've ever gone in there, not had any, and you need to go into a cigar shop. But Paul, doesn't it feature in the opening titles of Friends? Or am I imagining things? I don't really watch Friends, so I ah, can't tell okay. You. Well, if you watch Friends, maybe you can write in and tell me if Village Cigars has ever featured on it. There's one of the bars, Paul Ties. Ah, yes, I remember that place. Now, it was always known as being one uh, frequented more by the older gentlemen. So that means that I fit into that category now. So do I. <laughs> <laughs>
Another of the bars in the gay village is Pieces and we have been there on several occasions in the past. Oh, what's this I see? Doggies? Let's take a little walk into Christopher Park and I see there are some statues over here that we can say hello to. One of the other traditions of Christopher Street is the pet shop and it's a case of how much is that doggy in the window? There's two in there at the minute and they've got their water, I'm sure it's pretty cool behind the glass, hopefully anyway. Now what do we have here behind us? This looks like the hangar. I think it is, it doesn't say the name outside. But I think it is because it's not further down. Now the hangar was one of the first gay bars I went to in New York back in 1999 and I had a bit of a bad experience there. Nothing oh nothing to do with them themselves. It was it was all to do, it was all my fault because um, I was ordering all these like, really strong drinks and then I blacked out. And the next thing I remember is I woke up on the floor of my hotel room the next morning. This was before I met Paul. Um, it was the first time that I came over and I was bruised from uh -oh. top to toe. So I, I do uh, recall that I think that I had a, a really thin cocktail glass and that I held it too tightly and I broke it. So there's a possibility that I got ejected from here and then got beaten up when I was outside <laughs> by someone on the street. But oh, I, yeah. apart from that, you know, the, um, the bruises and everything, I have no memory of what may have happened. So anyway, that is our little trip along Christopher Street. And um, there's so many bars and restaurants along here to go to and also little shops, uh, boutique shops. And um, yeah, it's great to be out in the village.